So, all right, so this is, um, we are recording. So this is the AP testing guide for this year with under the circumstances. All right. Um, okay, so these are, um, so uh, summary of resources. So all of these things can be found at, at this, um, on that, on the web, on the web page, on the website, um, at that, e, uh, yeah, that URL. Um, oh man, I'm having a hard time focusing this morning. Okay, so I, you will find this PowerPoint. Okay, you will find an exam day checklist. Um, and this is something you will want to print before, or if you can't print it, you know, they say handwrite it, but you want to, you want to have it for, um, for reference. Uh, any required documents? So uh, we'll have some, re there's a list for specifically for chemistry uh, of some documents that you need to print. So uh, like the reference pages that I gave you guys at the first of the year that you've been using all year long. Um, it goes over the testing demo that you're gonna be able to do. Okay, so you're gonna have practice taking the test now, not the way the test is set up, but actually taking the test the way that it's being administered this year. So you can, starting Monday, you'll be able to take that pretty much as many times as you want or need um, to try it different ways in order to see which way works best for you, okay? Um, and then that way you will not be, you know, freaking out going oh crap this is not working as you're trying to take the test um and all the ap world stuff we don't have to worry about i don't know if you're going to be taking any of those if any of you are going to be taking and you know any of the ap lang language um tests that's going to be really interesting though okay so here's the four parts it goes over your e-ticket um, five steps to take before the exam day, what you're going to do on exam day and about the exams credit and placement. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this e-ticket. Um, two days before our test. So our test, so the AP chem test is on the 14th. Um, so on the 12th, you will receive an email with an exam ticket that looks like this one here. Um, and it will be, it, but it will say AP chemistry exam. It will have your AP ID on it. And so this is, you know, if you will, you will receive it by email. Uh, her, um, so Addie, have you been getting the emails from AP? Yeah. From the college board okay so you will be okay um, if anybody has not been getting these emails you need to go on to the my AP it will be on your my AP page also so you'll have two places for it those of you who um, have not been getting the emails <clears throat> If you go onto my AP, there is a way to change your email, but you can still get it off of my AP. So as long as you have access to your account, then um, you won't have a problem with, problem with this e-ticket for the exam. Um, I just want you guys to know they have gone through great lengths to make this test work and to make it as secure as they can under the circumstances. Uh, 
you know, they've got, there's, they've, they've spent a lot of money to make sure this exam can still be taken this year. So you can't share your e-ticket with anybody, just to let you know. Um, you can't hire somebody else to take your exam for you, uh, which is, I know it sounds weird, but it has happened in the past. It's, um, so, um, so, you know, nobody can, it can register for an exam now. You know, if you didn't already register for the exam, it's too late. Um, make sure you save your e-ticket in case you need to request a makeup exam because there are possibilities for makeup exams. Uh, so our, like I say, our test is Thursday, May 14th at 12 p.m. It, is, it starts at noon. So, you know, make sure, and everybody across, well, actually, anybody in, um, in the Orient, so China, Japan, over in that area, they take the exam first, and then the rest of the world, so America and Europe and, and South America, anybody in those areas, we all take it at the same time. So people on the, there were some people who will be taking it at like 6 a.m. their local time, while we're taking it at 12 p.m. our local time. Some people will be taking it you can see 6 p.m. It just, it all depends on, um, you know, where you're at. But everybody's going to be taking what, whichever test at the exact same time. So I guess in a way, no, you're not alone when you're taking it, even though you will be alone. You are not the only one taking the test at that point. Or here in Utah, we're not, you know, you're not the only one. So the rest of the, these are the makeup exam dates. So ours, if anything happens and you cannot take it on the 14th and you want, you want to take the makeup exam, that is on June 2nd at June 2nd at, let's see what time is ours, mountain time, 2 p.m. So that's your opportunity to either take the exam because you couldn't do it on the 14th or to make it up because something happened. Okay. They are um, putting, they've put measures into this that if something happens, you can, you can put in um, to, and request a, a makeup exam. Now. Um, yeah. So everybody, you know, you'll be taking, it'll be taken simultaneously worldwide. Um, like I say, except for like China and Japan and those, that area of the world, they always take it first because it always gets leaked from them. I know that sounds, that's, that's where it always gets leaked from. Um, so what to expect? on this year's exam. Um, it's not going to be, um, there's been rumors, it's gonna be harder to get a three, four or five on this year's exam. They say no. They have certain metrics and like algorithms and all this other stuff that they determine the difficulty of the exam compared to like a normal exam or Actually, it's the same thing that they do every year. They determine how hard the test is, and that's what your that's what your AP score is based off of. If it seemed to be an easier exam, then you know they they still gauge that on a three, four, or five scale. If it's a really hard exam for some reason, then they 
they take that into consideration and they slide the three, four, and five scaling accordingly, depending on how hard it is. And they're doing the same with this exam. So um, even though it's shorter and just for us, it's just, it's two questions. Um, and yeah, so AP exams are never graded on a curve. Okay. Um, and I think we've gone over what a curve is in class. I don't know. Have we ever gone over what a curve is? Um, I don't think so, but I know what it is. Okay, because my in my experience in high school, what kids think a curve is is not what it is. Yeah. Because kids think that grading on a curve is just like adjusting the test score by so many points because that's what everybody you know there's either bad questions or you take the highest score and move it up to the hundred percent um i'm like no that's not a curve you know they they do not give it um so there's no minimum or maximum you know the top 10% of students that take the AP test are not the only people that get fives, you know, because, and then, you know, so that it fits a bell curve. They don't, they don't do that. Um, and then don't worry if you don't complete all the parts of the question. This is something that I think is, is quite important if you are running out of time and you still have parts of the question you have not answered, you didn't even get to them, don't worry about it. Just get your test submitted. Okay. If there are, if there are parts, they, they have like guaranteed that if there are parts that you did not answer, um, it is still possible to get a five, even if you did not finish the questions, because if you, they gate, they gauge your answer off of what you've answered, not what you have not. Now, if I think if you skip a part, it may, I don't know that part. I'm not clear on if you skip something, but usually, if you've noticed, the questions, one question leads to the next, to the next, to the next. So it's kind of hard to skip one piece, yeah. you know, without and, and, not be able, and not be able to answer. But if you're like thoroughly answering all the other parts and you get down, you still have two parts to the question and your time is up, just forget those two parts and get your test submitted those lot like the last two parts of the question they won't count against you they will they will base your score off of what you did answer okay so that's um that was something that they kept pointing out is it's get your test submitted make sure answer the question to the best of your ability and get the test submitted on time um, So, okay, we all know the test is shorter this year. Um, so let's see. Um, since, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. We, okay, I mean, something that's really cool this year is I am going to get your tests. I am actually, they are going to send me an electronic copy of every, of everybody who takes the test. I get a copy of your test. Cool. And if that's never been done, the teachers have never seen their own students work mm -hmm. unless by chance they happen to get one of their students if they were a grader. Um, and so, you know, I can, 
I will ha I can have a chance to review your work and see what you do. And if your score comes out and I think that your score, that you earned a better score than what the graders gave you, I can, um, I, I can actually work with the people and try to get your score increased if I think that you know you were you were graded unfairly so and that's a first that's that's a first for this this exam uh, but they're hoping maybe they're going to be you know maybe the test is going to get moved to electronically like this and it might become more of a norm which would be nice for us teachers I would like to see um, like the past years, I don't know what my students did. I know their scores. I just don't know how, you know. Okay, like on a question for me, if I can see your test, I can see where I may have um, not covered things adequately enough for the test. So that helps me up my game to cover, cover the test better to cover the cover the subject better so people can do better on the test um okay so your tet your the exam questions will be viewed in a web browser very important thing that no internet explorer i don't think it's actually in this but they kept saying that during the webinar you cannot use Internet Explorer, period. And it this test does not work in Internet Explorer, okay? Um, so you can type your you can type your responses into the test or into a like a Google Doc, a Word document. Um, then you can copy and paste it into the into the test. <clears throat> to submit it, you can upload the document to the test to submit it, or you can, <clears throat> if you decide to handwrite it, you will be able to take a picture on your phone and upload it. Okay, upload the picture. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, you cannot have two electronic devices going at the same time. You cannot have the test up on two different electronic devices. So um, my understanding is like, if you have, you either need to have a camera on your device if you're going to take a picture and upload it, you either have to be, you have to be accessing the test on your phone or you know, or your computer has to have a camera that you can take a picture with, and to upload it onto the um, onto the computer. Okay. okay, but you cannot have you cannot have the test up on your phone, um, or the test up on your computer, and then I think you well if if you have the ability. And I wouldn't count on this because I've had this glitch on me too. Uh, taking a picture on your phone and then uploading it to Google Photos mm -hmm. and then downloading it to your computer and then uploading it to the test. That may be something that, see, because I'll be able to take the test too. That may be something that I will try. Okay. You know, and see if I can do that in the five minutes to to submit the um the test or if it that won't work you know yeah. um they've had i've really been surprised at the amount of things the the possibilities that they have come up with yeah. okay um so here's the copy paste um a typed response so if you want to type it into the computer, now uh, 
this is what they suggest. They actually suggest that on your computer screen, you have like two side-by-side -side windows opened. One's your document, one is the test. Yeah. And so you can still see the test and be typing on your document. Your um, AP ID and initials and a page, well, I guess on a document, it gives you you may want to insert page numbers, okay. you know, um, you know, just format the document so that it shows the page number. Yeah. Uh, but that has to be like, you could make it a running header on, on your, on your um, document. Okay. And they suggest that you prepare those documents ahead of time. You have it, you have it ready, you know, um, you know, like question one, AP Chem question one, and then your name, your AP ID and your initials. It, you don't have to put your name on it, just your initials and your AP ID. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the timer hits five minutes remaining, you copy and paste it and then click submit. So you'll have a text box, you can just copy and paste. Um, like I said, you know, you can have, like it shows here, window one is your, for the test. Uh, window two is your document. You know, whichever, whatever you decide, whichever program you decide, if you're going to type it. Um, if you're going to just submit the document, you can do the same thing. Google Docs, Microsoft, you know, Word, Notes any type of word processing application you need to save it as a in one of these formats and like i say make sure again you got to make sure that that information is at the top of each page um you will have and yeah if your exam is two questions you'll have two different documents Oh, okay. So, so you can title title one in advance. Title one document like AP Chem Question One, and then and then title the other document AP Chem Question Two. Okay. So, and you can have those on your desktop already. Yeah. Before the test even begins, that way you're not wasting test, you know, answer time, writing up or creating this document. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine to have those made ahead of time. And they strongly suggest that you do. Okay. Um, so with that, you'll just be able to attach, uh, when the timer goes is up, you'll just be able to attach those documents. You'll be able to just upload the file. See how it's, it, it'll have like text or photo. You'll be able to, and then choose the, the correct file to upload okay. you know yeah. um i don't know are you planning on typing or handwriting i was planning on handwriting it but i'm not sure i'll have to try it when the practice test comes out okay i i really suggest that you yeah try it um the nice now because handwriting you know take your picture and you know you can upload the picture instead if you want to handwrite it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know they say that I think it was like they send out a survey, and like eighty percent of the AP Chem kids said they were going to handwrite them. Oh. Okay. Um, but something that they said in the um, in this webinar was that they have okay they have formulated the question in such a way that there is not going to be like um heavy you know there's not going to be any drawings there are not going to be um i mean there will be calculations yeah but they should be simple enough calculations that if you need you can either but you can either explain write out the calculation like as a sentence mm -hmm.
but there is also um, on the website there's a a keyboard shortcut to okay. writing equations that they are going to that you can print and maybe like practice typing out some equations but they'll be simple enough equations they they were saying and this is this comes from one of the women who wrote the AP test this year. Mm -hmm. She says that they are simple enough equations you can type them out either words or using these keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Um so that's what's important for between you know I mean practicing this exam and deciding practicing the exam in different ways and deciding which way you feel is going to be best for you okay. to, to take it. Um, we don't have to go over music theory or uh, languages. Um, if you have any testing accommodations, if you applied for any kind of testing accommodation through the college board, um, I mean, most, most kids, it's extended time. That yeah. extended time would just show up on your test. Okay. So when your timer starts, instead of the, um, you know, 25 minutes for the first test, it would show whatever time your accommodation says. Okay. And then you would have the five minutes at the end to, um, to upload the test. Okay. So that, that will just should come through. Now, if there is, um, like I said, I mean, there's all of these things listed here. If something suddenly happens, okay. It's like somebody, they, they put here, like suddenly you have an injured hand, <laughs> you break your hand. Okay. You can apply for, a, you have to go to the AP, this particular website, um, and you can apply for like an emergency accommodation because okay. you broke your hand, so you can't write or type. Yeah. And they may either, you know, you can either, that was the example that they gave. You may qualify for a scribe. Okay. So like your mom could sit and type it or write it for you. You tell her what to type or write and she does it for you mm -hmm. or your dad or somebody. Um, or, you know, they, they'll help you figure out how, you know, what accommodation you need. Um, here is some important information. I think this is really important stuff. Requesting a makeup exam. So, if you're in the middle of taking the exam and something happens, your internet goes out um, or your internet starts to hang really bad, mm -hmm. um, your distraction-free environment suddenly becomes non-distraction-free. Mm -hmm. And they, they use the example of, you know, if you've got little brothers and sisters, and one of them starts screaming in the background and it's really distracting to you because you know you're already stressed out about this exam and then somebody starts screaming and it's really distracting um you can apply for a makeup exam okay okay um but you have to submit you have to go to this this website you have to submit it within 48 hours of the original exam date okay Okay, um, so don't call the AP services, like the number that's on their website, do not call because all the call centers are closed. Okay. You need to email. Um, they, you know, they're going to be pretty lenient about the makeup exams because of these circumstances. Yeah. Um, but you know, or if you wake up that morning and you are sick as a dog and there's, you know, you can't focus on it on an exam, 
See, it says like battery failures, power outages, technical disruptions, you know, interruptions from your family members. Suddenly mom or dad walk in in the middle of your test and start talking to you. And you feel that it, it distracted you enough from the test that you weren't able to do your best. You can apply for makeup exam. Um, just either running out of time or um, just feeling like you didn't do your best, they won't allow a makeup exam for that. Those are, you know, the two, two big reasons why they would probably not um, allow a makeup exam. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Just so, so the exam will guide you through on test day. Um, once you click on your e-ticket. Um, uh, so they know unexpected things can, uh, can happen. Um, so here's some other details and tips. So it's five steps before taking the test. Okay, so reviewing content, um, check your tech. So that, that's, one, that's another reason for, all, for trying the demo test several times. You know, try it on a laptop, try it on a desktop, try it on your phone. Decide which one is going to be the best for you. Right. Um, so what I will, they, what they were saying is like me as a teacher, I can go in and make up several using the demo test format. I can go in and choose a free response question to link to different demos. Okay. And that way you're answering an actual chemistry question but you will actually see everything on the screen the way you're going to see it during the test. Okay. So that way you can get used to, to that, um, to those things. And that's also how you can decide, do I want to handwrite it? Do, would I be better typing it? Um, they've tried to make this, I think they've, they were saying in, in all the sciences, they've tried to make the questions typing friendly. Okay. So um, like with the physics exam, I think they're gonna have the same keyboard shortcut. Um, like note guide, so they can, you can type it. Um, if, you, if you would rather type it. Uh, so gather, make sure you've got everything print download so you can have like several windows open mm -hmm. on on your on on your screen um but i would have them open before you take the test before you even start the test before you start the um before you start the identification questions that they're gonna ask before the test, because they are going to make sure you are who you say you are. I'm not sure how they're gonna do that, but I guess we'll know more after. <laughs> um, after you guys go through all of that, I bet you know. Um, and so you got your, you'll get your email confirmation. Um, make sure First of all, that all of your information is correct on the My AP. Okay. okay. Make sure you've got the right email address. Um, so if you need to update that, you can. Um, so if, like I said, I, you've been getting the emails. If others have not, you may have to make sure that you've got um, the college, you know, e.collegeboard.org is a safe um, email address so that they actually come to your inbox and not go to your um, trash or 
to your um, the other what uh, the the spam bot your spam box I couldn't remember the word spam um, the spam email box um, but like I said your your remember your e ticket is also on your my AP account and. I think that's I think that's where you have to go in the first place to access the test. Um, so, yeah, check your devices. Make sure using the demo, where you don't have to have the lockdown browser. Okay, this is something that they kept stressing. If you have Grammarly on your computer, you need to remove it before you take the test. For some reason, and they don't know why, they have contacted Grammarly. Grammarly does, it, it blocks this test. It does something and the test will not work if you've got Grammarly on the device you're going to be using. So you need to actually remove it. You can't disable it, you gotta remove it. Um, they've tested it with all other types of plugins and Grammarly is the only one that does something to the test and the test doesn't work. So that's the other reason for the demo is to make sure that the test will work on your computer or whatever device you're going to use it on. Okay, so you have big thing. Take Grammarly off of whatever it is that you are, um, whatever device you're going to use it on. Um, so here is, okay, so if you're more comfortable handwriting, um, but, you know, chemistry, calculus, statistics, okay, I know we did a lot of handwriting at the beginning because it was going to be on paper, right? Yeah. Now it's on computer. So if you want to try, I think this is where you will find the, um, the, that guide to the keyboard shortcuts for different formulas or, um, you know, for typing, typing a formula if you want to type the formula. Um, So, the, okay, so that, um, so basically, yeah, decide which, which program you want to use, you know, and practice using that. And yeah, I really do suggest practicing the different types and see which one works best, which one you feel is, will work the best for you. And then keep practicing that particular method. Okay, right. so like these practice exams. Um, then uh, you can just, you can keep practicing that way so you get used to it before the exam. Um, yeah, they really are going over checking, checking your tech, your tech and making sure that things work before you take the exam. Um, let's see, so, oh, thank you. Sorry. So, um, <laughs> dogs just escaped. Hey, come on, doggos. Come on, Ninja. Sorry. Ninja, come on in. And so, um, yeah, That's practice the, yeah, if you've got the world exam, the world languages exams, they are, it's going to be different. Um, okay, so what do we need on exam day? That's not us. We'll go down to, here we go. Ninja! Ninja! Trying to keep the dogs in the house. Okay, um, so for chemistry, your reference material, periodic table, um, the 
equations, you know, the reference sheets that we've been using all year, the keyboarding tips, and a calculator. Okay, those are what are required. Um, if let's see, did it list the? Uh, it, yeah, there's a place where there's the optional stuff. Okay. Um, at first, I heard that you know you got the you got the hard copy book. Um, they are now saying, oh, here's the. I went right to it. You can use your class notes or study guides, textbooks, other classroom resources. Okay, guys, these can be printed or digital. So if you've got, you know, but I would um, try to consolidate everything. Now, I do have a digital copy of the original textbook that we were using. Um, I can, I can like put a link up for that, for that book and you can make a copy of it. Okay. You, we cannot, you cannot have any shared documents on or any currently shared documents on your computer. Okay. They have, um, they are going to, they, they say they, they have ways of detecting if two people have access to the same document. So you, you're going to want to make sure if you're currently sharing like a study guide or something, um, if you've been working with other people in the class on, on some stuff, you have to make sure that it is your own copy and that it is not shared with anybody. Okay. But have those things up. Um, you know, already have them open and up before you even start the exam. Okay. Um, cause that was a little different than what I originally heard. Cause I originally heard there would be no, you know, all your source, your resources needed to be non-digital and they switched it to digital. Digital is allowed to. Um, so internet searches, remember, waste your exam time. Just, just saying. And um, they're gonna, they have tech up. They say that where they can, they can see especially like when you submit something if you've copied and pasted something from a web page they will be able to tell um by the way that's also called plagiarism uh, can you look up, like lewis structures can you what can you look up lewis structures possibly okay um you know, if I, you know, cause I, I don't think they are, I don't think they're, they're looking at you looking up stuff, but if you need to look up like a Lewis structure, you might have a, a, a web page up already and where you can quickly look up the Lewis structure, okay. um, but don't copy and paste it from wherever you look it up. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Cause I think they'll be looking for stuff like that. Um, there is an also, also like AP open book tips. I was reading through this website and they've got some good, um, some good information and, you know, helpful hints when it comes to o the open book, open note stuff. So, um, so you'll receive, you will receive an email on Monday, May 4th 
um, with it, and it's going to be a fake e-ticket. Okay. Okay. That is the e-ticket that you will be using to do the demos. Oh, okay. Okay. Because that, that way you can, and, you know, it's my understanding you can keep reusing that particular e-ticket to retake demos. Okay. And that, you know, but it's going to, that because that's part of the, of the test is starting with the e-ticket and going, going forward. So Monday, you'll get that, that fake e-ticket two days before the exam. So on the 12th, you will get your real e-ticket, the one for the exam. Um, so on the exam day, make sure that you have your AP checklist. And I would, you know, do that beforehand. Uh, so this is kind of a picture of it. So either print it or write it, write it down. I wouldn't want to handwrite all of this. Yeah. But if you have an issue with it and you have printer issues, let me know. I can print it and like leave it at the school for you. If anybody needs that, I don't think anybody does, but just in case, I will happily print some and like leave them on the table outside the school office that you can come get. Um, make sure that you are logging on 30 minutes prior to the exam time. That's something here uh, for exam day. Actually, it says right here. Here we go. Two question exams. Check in 30 minutes before the test because there is there are several ID oriented test um, or questions. So that's part of their security. So you have to provide some information so that they know that you are the person who's supposed to be taking the test. And then you just wait for the test. The test will start automatically. Now, it may not start exactly at noon, you know, internet lag and everything. Don't freak out if it doesn't start exactly at noon. <coughs> um, if it takes a couple of minutes, you're not losing the, um, you're not losing that two minutes. Okay, the que when question one appears, when, you know, that's, that's when your time starts. So don't, don't worry about that if it doesn't start exactly at noon. Um, if you've got, once you get down to the, you know, the last five minutes of the question, submit whatever you have done. And don't, like I say, don't worry about anything you haven't answered. Um, they kept stressing that. Don't worry about anything you haven't answered just submit what you got done. Um, we don't need to worry about those. Okay, testing environment, make sure it's a quiet room, distraction free. Um, you know, enable the do not disturb or, you know, turn the, the sound off on your device, on any devices. Uh, yeah, make sure your device is plugged in. So even if it's on your phone, make sure your phone is plugged in just so um, you've got, you know it's not going to die on you or, you know, maybe glitch out on you. I don't know. Um, if you have limited bandwidth, make sure that you ask everybody, like, tell your, you know, tell your brothers, please don't be playing all kinds of, you know, video games, online video games while you're trying to take the test to, so, cause they suck up a lot of bandwidth. 
um, or streaming lots of Netflix videos just to make sure you know your internet doesn't lag at that point especially in the five minutes of submitting the test mm -hmm. um, so have everything ready next to you um, so it says you may not incorporate work which is not your own you, uh, or you may not re receive aid of any kind from anyone. Um, so it goes through through the okay through the web, a phone, social media. So they will. I mean, they they've tried to come up with and think about all possible ways of cheating mm -hmm. so um, so they will you know they, they will cancel your scores and report you to colleges if you if they catch you cheating um, so you can look more you can look for at that information there Okay, so check into your test 30 minutes before. Um, so the first, once the exam starts, the first exam question will automatically appear. And oh, do not refresh your browser after the question has appeared. You should not refresh your browser during the exam. I think that was something I read over and over. So you'll see a, time, a time, countdown timer. And they also said, if the countdown timer hangs, don't freak out, okay? Or if it says exam starts and then it takes a minute or two before the exam actually starts, don't freak out. It can just, it could be their servers, you know? Um, so it, but once that, once that, the timer, it'll say the test begins, the test, this question will start. Um, so like, here's an example of handwriting questions. Um, once again, take exam, or, oh, it does say, it says disabled. Okay, so the plugin has to be disabled. It says disabled here, but they said remove it. So, um, so, um, if exams with more than one question, you can't, the, the questions will start automatically once your time is up. Okay. So the first question will go through the 25 minutes. You have your five minutes to take the exam or to submit the question and then once that five minutes is up the second question will automatically start okay um yeah, it talks about managing your time make sure don't and i know this is really hard when you're taking an exam but they say when the five minutes start, you know, time left to submit your work, you'll see it this type of a timer. Um, stop and submit the question. And I know that's really hard. Um, don't, it's kind of hard to go, ah, I can just, I can hurry and finish this. Try, you know, try to give yourself enough time to submit it. Um, you know, not enough time to submit your work is not a good reason for being able to do the makeup test. Um, let's see, submitting your response. Now, okay, this part, one of the things, if, if you submit your work, and for question one and question two starts but question one hasn't completed uploading yet 
they say, don't worry about that. Start on question two, because as long as you've hit submit and it shows that it is either pending or um, that it shows that it's uploading, it will upload in the background. But if <clears throat> once you're done with question two, and you hit submit at the end of question two, um, do not leave the browser, do not close that window until you get the message, your AP exam is complete. Okay, if you close out the window, that will cancel the upload for question two. So leave it open and wait until you see that your AP exam is complete. Okay. Um, so it says if you like lose temporary internet access, just click the e-ticket and it'll take you back to the exam. Okay. Um, and continue the exam, but if you feel like that um, impacted the performance, you can request the makeup exam. But your exam can be, you know, if for some reason you get kicked out of it for something and you get back in, you can get back into it. Um, just, but remember, don't refresh your browser or hit the back arrow. <clears throat> don't they say do not do that during the exam at all um, exam scores so you know same thing the exam scores will come through beginning july 15th um, i know let's see you can sign in by june 20th and have your scores sent to whatever college you want um, so before June 20th, they can be sent anywhere. Um, after June 20th, they can be sent anywhere, but it's a $15 fee if you want them sent somewhere. Uh, this is all a bunch of like little testimonials and things from different universities saying, yes, we are going to accept this year's AP exam scores. Okay. Because of the situation, they're gonna, they will accept those. Okay, and the last slide is just a reminder, check your tech, do not use Internet Explorer. Like I said, for some reason they have found it just, the exam does not work on Internet Explorer. So you've got to use Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge. It will work in any of those, it just won't work in Internet Explorer. Um, so check those out. You may, I don't know if you use different browsers. I think Chrome is the preferred one. Yes, it says right there. Chrome is preferred, but you can try the demo in different browsers. If you prefer a different browser, try the demo in that. If it doesn't seem to work as well, go to Chrome and try it in Chrome. Okay. Um, and um, then it says disable any browser plugins or extensions, especially Grammarly. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so if you need to disable any browser extensions, you know, you can search that. So, okay. So, any questions? I know that took, yeah, that took longer than expected, but you can also find this and reference this on the AP website. Okay. I think there's a link, to, I think they have a link to this on the student, on this, on the student page also, along with probably all those links that um, I showed you where you can get the reference pages yeah. to print and everything. So. Okay. Okay. Yep, sounds good. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And you have a great rest of your day and keep emailing me if you need.
any help. And like I say, we can do Zoom right. calls if you need. Okay. okay. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.